Do you have a cool photo that you want to get printed really big, but you don't know how to do it using Photoshop? And what is up guys? I'm Jason Ultrad and you're watching another tutorial on a Tuesday. Now, one of the biggest problems that I had when I started creating the composited portraits that I make was I didn't know how to save them out of Photoshop or Lightroom so I could print them really, really large. And I mean really large, 50, 60, and even 70 plus inches in most cases. So a few years ago, I made a video showing you how to export your small, tiny little digital files so you could create large scale prints. Well, after a lot of questions and a lot of confusion about what I showed you not working, I followed your video and my picture still looks bad when I print it big. How can I save a picture that I got off the internet so I can make a really big print? Well, stay tuned because after I show you how to save your digital photos so you can make large prints, I'll answer those questions and I'm going to show you why not every single photo in the world can be saved in Photoshop for a large scale print. All right, so here we are in Photoshop and I want to take this family portrait composite that I made of my family and I want to make it really big and have it printed really big so I can hang it on my wall and show my family off to all my friends and family when they come over. Now, the most important thing to remember about having a digital print printed large scale is that whatever size you're going to print it, you need to make your digital image that size. You need to save it as that size. And so right now, this image here, if we go in here and we click on our ruler and we go to inches, we see that it is roughly about 24 to 25 inches. Well, I want this thing to be more like 70 inches. So I need to save it out of Photoshop as a 70 inch JPEG so I can then take it to my printer and have it printed. All right. So I'm going to show you really quick how to do that. I'm going to go up here to uh, image here right here and you're going to go to image size now on image size we're going to go over here to inches if you're on pixels or anything else uh, pikas whatever pikas means you can tell me in the comments below who in the heck uses pikas all right so we're going to go to inches because i know i'm going to scale this thing up i'm going to blow it up to 70 inches so i'm going to go ahead and hit 70 there height is uh, around 40 inches and I'm just going to resample it as auto. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Alrighty, so here we are. Photoshop took quite a while to enlarge that because it's dealing with a lot of pixels, but we finally have our image at a 70 inch. I'm going to go here and we're going to bring it down to full screen so you can see up here in our ruler that it is roughly at about 70 inches. So right now we're at a 16 percent enlargement and if I go in here and I enlarge it to a hundred percent you're going to see that the quality is pretty darn good it's not too bad here that's at a hundred percent so that's pretty darn good all right so now that you know how to save your digital photo in Photoshop so you can print it really big let's talk about why this may not work for a particular photo that you're trying to have printed really large First, size, when it comes to digital photography and printing, really does matter. You see, if the size of your original digital photo is small, Teeny it's going to be almost impossible to retain the quality of the image as you enlarge it in Photoshop. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Alrighty, so here we are back in Photoshop, and I have a photo of the back end of a blue Cadillac that I photographed using Ektar 100 film in my Hasselblad, had it processed and scanned, and they gave me a scan that was a, roughly about 15 inches wide. So does size matter? Well, in many cases it does. If you're starting from a very small image and trying to blow it up to a very large image, that enlargement is going to deteriorate your image. Photoshop isn't creating more pixels as you blow it up. It's doing a good job, but it doesn't create magic for you. All right, so let's go ahead and blow this image up and we'll take a look and see what it looks like. So at image, image size, we're going to come in here from 15. Let's go ahead and type in 70 here. And on our little preview screen, 
we can already see that we get a little bit of breakdown in our image. We're seeing some pixelation that we don't normally see when it's smaller in its original size. So the bigger we go up, the more we see those pixels in there because those gaps, those spaces between the pixels, if you will, become bigger and bigger as we blow it up more and more. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK. And we're gonna take a look at our image at 100%. Not horrific, not too bad, but it's still, we see a lot of pixelation and a little bit of breakdown in this image that if we were to print this on a metal print or an acrylic print, probably would not look that good when we're standing up closer to it. We'd see the fuzziness on the edges. We'd see the pixelation uh, within the image when we blow it up that large. Now, size alone isn't the only thing that determines whether your digital photo can be printed large or not. Image quality, and that means how many pixels there are per inch, also plays a significant role. Now, if size matters, so does the quality of the image. And the quality of the image means how many pixels there are per square inch. So the more pixels you have per square inch, the more ability you have to blow this image up in bigger and bigger proportions to have it printed. The less pixels there are per inch, the less ability you have to blow it up uh, bigger and bigger. So let me show you how to determine what your image quality is. So if we go up to image again, image size, we can go in here and we can look at our resolution here, right here. So our resolution in this case is 72 pixels per inch. Not terribly bad, but it doesn't give us a lot of room for enlargement. So if we come in here and we enlarge this to a 70, and we look at our little preview screen, we can definitely see the, the pixelation or the granularity within the sky here. And we come down here and we can just see a breakdown overall of the lines in this image. And that's because as Photoshop is enlarging this, it only has 72 pixels per inch. So as it goes bigger and bigger and bigger, the spaces, if you will, between those pixels get larger and larger. And we visually see a breakdown in that image when that occurs. All right, so I'm not going to go ahead and enlarge that. But over here, if we go to the, uh, the composited portrait of my family and we go up to image, come down to image size, we see that the resolution is 320 pixels per inch. And that is a good quality image. You can blow this image up really, really, really large and still maintain really good quality. Of course, if you get up into 100 or greater as far as your uh, size, 100 inches or greater, we might have a breakdown, a significant enough breakdown in that image. So we would see uh, a deterioration of that image. I'm not really sure if you know uh, how big you can go or if there's a printing process that doesn't matter about the resolution of your image, that you can print as big as you want to go. I'd love to know that printing process. But for our sake and for the print labs that we go to here, generally speaking, uh, the resolution of your image makes a huge difference in how big you can enlarge it for prints. And there you have it. Now you know how to save your digital photo in Photoshop so you can print it really, really big. And you also know why not all digital photos are created equal and not all digital photos can be printed large. So if you like this video, show that thumbs up, that like button, a little bit of love, and subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more tutorials every Tuesday. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today, and I'll see you next week for another fascinating tutorial on Tuesday.